let's talk about basics of identity and access management on AWS. The service responsible for identity and access management is called AWS IAM and we will talk in detail about how this service works, what are the nitty gritty component as a, uh, be behind the scene, how your authentication process happens and some more component with IAM. Pretty interesting topic and we'll discuss lots and lots of interesting stuff in this particular module. Now, let's talk about flow of request first. So you want to talk to AWS resources, maybe you are performing some operation, you are deploying something, and for all of that, you have to send request to AWS. The model of AWS resources is request and response. You send some request, and based on that, would be, be getting a response. Maybe you wanted to create something, delete something, modify something. So everything is a request. This request is an API call. API stands for Application Programming Interface. It is a method by which you communicate to a system. You send a request in a predefined format and in a predefined type of response comes back from it. And that follows some standard of communication, standard of sending and receiving requests that is referred as an API. So consider it is a language which AWS endpoint speak by which you receive the data. What we mean by endpoint here? When you send a request, let's say you want to launch an EC2 machine. So that request has to go to EC2 endpoint. When you do it from console, automatically it happens behind the scene that the right endpoint is selected and your request goes to that endpoint. When you wanted to create an S3 bucket, the request has to go to an S3 endpoint and this happens behind the scene. So endpoint are the interfaces who would accept the request verify some details and if everything is fine it would then process the request which you have just sent so when this request is going to aws behind the scene two more thing happens first thing which happens is iam intercepts the request whatever requests are going instead of saying intercept i would say every request flows through iam and iam decides on whether to allow that request or whether deny that request Every request to talk to an AWS endpoint, modify something, delete something, create something goes through IAM and it has power to allow or deny request. Only after allowing request will be forwarded to AWS endpoint and the requested work would be carried out. If it is denied by IAM, you won't be able to get that request authored or sorry, uh, honored by AWS endpoint. Now, while IAM takes care of allowing or denying the request which has come, Another service is there into picture, which is called AWS CloudTrail. I call CloudTrail as a camera, which is recording every API activity. Like if you have a camera in your building lobby, whoever comes in, what may be the reason, whether they came to meet someone or deliver a parcel or just to see from inside, everything would be recorded into it. And similarly, whatever you do on AWS endpoint, whatever request you send, whether it was allowed or denied will be will be captured by CloudTrail as a service and only after that, that request goes through the endpoint. So this happens behind the scene, IAM allows or denies and CloudTrail record that information. IAM is responsible for two main things. One is called authentication. So one thing it will help you in is authentication of the request and second, it will also take care of authorization authorization of the request in standard language you may call it auth and uh, authentication and here at the top and sorry and and uh, come on and then you would have authorization you will refer that as auth z which is your authorization so we will talk about both of them in a minute how it works I prefer to explain things through analogy. So let me take an example again to help you understand what is authentication and authorization and they sound similar, but they are different things. Let's say you're traveling to another country and consider there is a border control in picture or a passport control in picture. Whoever is traveling, they would be presenting their passport to the passport officer or border control officer. Your passport is having your photo your information, date of birth, maybe date of issue, passport number, signature of you, that is telling who you are. That is a authentication happening there. 
So passport officer will check the photo in the passport, compare with your face. That is authentication happened there. They may also check whether the passport is genuine or not. And if it, everything is fine, then they will go to the next step. Next step is to allow you in the country or not. And in most cases, you would need a visa. Visa is your authorization to enter into that country. You may have a tourist visa, which will allow you to travel to different places. Maybe be, you will be able to stay for a limited time period, 90 days, 30 days, 15 days, depending on your visa validity. You may have work visa, which may allow you to even accept work in that country. So that is your authorization. Are you authorized to only travel or are you authorized to also work that is stated on the visa. So authentication is verifying who you are. That is passport telling you, telling the visa officer the same thing and your visa details tells them that what you can do in this particular case and they may ask you some questions around it if they need to. So hopefully this thing is clear. Authentication and authorization. Authentication is who you are. Authorization is what can you do into the console or into AWS environment. So how AWS IAM create this kind of uh, architecture to allow both authentication and authorization. So IAM has two major type of resources. One which facilitate authentication process and second who facilitate the authorization. For authentication, the component which are there in IAM is reusers, user groups and roles. We will talk about each of them independently and these are referred as identities. Why they are called identities? Because they are identifying someone, maybe a user, maybe a group or maybe a role. Right? So that are your authentication resources. For authorization, everything is taken care by policies. Policies are written into JSON format and I'll show you some of them in the next chapters. But policies dictate what can be done, what is allowed, what is denied. So basically it is a statement where we have details about what is allowed and what is denied. Those are called policies. There are different type of policies. We'll discuss about them as we move forward. Right. So hopefully this thing is clear. Identities are helping you with authentication, user, user group and role and authorization is provided by the policies which you utilize. Now, if you want to access AWS services, there are multiple methods to access it. These are the three most common ways or I would say these are the three possible ways to access AWS services. I could access services through management console from the graphical browser based interface. I could go to a command prompt and then run some command which will interact with uh, interact with AWS endpoint and perform some operation for me or I could have written some code into a specific language java.net php and that code on my behalf would go ahead and perform operation on AWS environment. So whatever method I choose to communicate to AWS at the back end everything is treated as an API call. Only the way we send API call would be different. Sometime it will be a graphical interface, sometime a command, sometime a program, but at the back end, everything is an API call. Now, obviously, we need to have auth authorization to use these tools. So, how we implement that authorization and authentication mechanism? Let's see that. For management console, you need to have a username. So, you would use a username that would allow you. To log into console, you would set up a password and then you would perform some operation and I'll show you that in a demo in a minute and you may also have a multi-factor authentication added for extra security which is optional layer. So if you are trying to log into a management console, what you would need, you would need a username and you would need a password to log in. These two are mandatory thing and then obviously you would need to know which account you want to log into. So that would be a 12 digit account ID you would be needing. Like if I'm here I am logged in but if I see here this tells me that I am a user into cloud tech learning account which is basically the ID of 5031 something and I am currently logged in as an IAM user called admin. Let me sign out and show you how the console looks like. So I am logged off and I am trying to sign into console again and now I should be given this type of request. Right. Now what I am seeing here either I could put the 12 digit account ID 
but it is not very easy to remember so what i could do i could create something called aliases alias would help me to have a rememberable name like cloud tech learning this is the name i have chosen and i am trying to log in as a iam user call admin and i am having a password and then i can sign in now this will only happen if i already have a user created with the name admin and then only we are able to perform that operation so that is required to have that is it is required to have a user created and then only you can log in if you do not have a user created let's say it is your very first time you are logging into aws console then you do not authenticate using an iam user that time you sign in as a root user so when you sign in as a root user you do not have to tell the account id you just say the email address you have used for that account click on next and you are inside the account but root is a very powerful user it has all access enabled which you cannot restrict and that's why we avoid to use root as a user for regular work let's keep it only for very very important stuff like changing your billing information or maybe making some other people administrator those kind of high value tasks should only be carried out by root in very very rare condition so right now i am using a iam user i am providing the 12 digit account id i want to log into i would provide the username and password and then i sign in so now i am getting authenticated by aws iam what can i do in the console once i am authenticated that will be all done by the policies which is assigned to me and we will see it in a demo that how we can create this user group policies and create some interesting uh, roles also to pro provide access to different user and have them access different services so we'll see all these things in a minute okay so for my management console what i had to do i had to access it through a username and password but the same method is not applicable when i want to access things from command line or from sdk or command line and sdk based access sdk stand for software development kit what i would need i would need access key and secret access key these are randomly generated numbers or a string for me by aws service to ensure that i can be authenticated and authorized to perform operation so access key and secret key is generated in iam and we'll see that in a minute you would need access key and secret access key only if you want to make a request to command line or you want to access services through an sdk if you always just want to use management console you will not need access key and secret access key you would just need username and password in that case all right hopefully this thing is clear now let's go ahead and talk about how we would use iam as a service for that i want to go with a simple business requirement let's say we just have a new aws account and now we are given a task that we have to set up some user groups we have to set up some user and we have to associate some permissions with them so user group is a developers group that would have two user called d1 and d2 they can use amazon s3 service and amazon ec2 service that is what my developers are allowed to do on the other hand i also want a qa group in that i would have user q1 and q2 and they can only read amazon s3 objects so we can be very granular here we want to allow only read nothing else and we want them to deploy t2.micro ec2 instance in ireland region only another restriction i want to put yes you could deploy t2.micro but only in ireland and nothing beyond it plus i also want to create one more set of user who is called admin 001 now intentionally i don't want it to be added to a group i just want to show that you can create users independently may not add them into group but you could still give them permission like for this admin 007 my james bond user i want to assign full admin permission so we'll see how all these things work into the next module so i hope you are enjoying and learning we will implement this business requirement into aws iam into the next module i'll see you into the next section thank you
So let's continue our discussion of creating this type of user group, user and permission. We are trying to implement a business requirement into AWS IAM. Obviously, I need to access console for this time. Obviously, I could do this thing from command line too, but just to make things easier, I'm using AWS console here. So I'm logged in as a user here, admin, who is into this account. And obviously, you would need permission to perform these operation. I am having an admin list, administrative level access, and that's why I can create user, but not everyone should be able to create user in your corporate account. It should be uh, restricted to only few people. The service I would be interested in would be IAM. Now, one more thing about IAM that it is a global service. The console right now points to Ireland, but right now if I click on IAM, let's see what happens. It should change to global because whatever I am creating in IAM is a global entity. So I am here. I am on dashboard screen of IAM. It has some recommendation for me to highlighted in red, something which is urgent, which I should take care. Let's first see what is good. Green is good. Root user has MFA. So my root user here has a multi-factor authentication. So it's a good thing. Add MFA for myself. This user, which I am currently logged in with, is not having multi-factor authentication. I should do it. We'll do that in some time. And your user admin does not have any active access keys that have been unused for more than a year. So I do not have any stale access keys. I should rotate them. And I do not have a problem like this as of now. Plus, I need to update access permission for billing, cost management, and account console. So that would be coming up that we can fix it. Now, here we have account aliases. So if you remember, I could have typed the account ID or I could have used a specific alias. This is a, any available alias I could use and that would give me a unique URL to log into starting with my alias dot sign in aws dot amazon dot com slash console. So I want to implement this particular solution of creating two user group first and then we will uh, keep on moving toward user and permission model. Let's first go to the user groups here. So I'll go to this user groups and here I would go ahead and say I want to create a group. The group name is developer. And I am not associating any permission with them. So I have created a group called developers. There is no permission associated. I am creating another group that is called my QA group. I am not associating any permission to them too. And now I have two groups created now. Let's go ahead and create users now. So here two users already exist. One is admin, one is KMS demo user. I would go ahead and add more users here. I am going through wizard, so I have to add details one by one, but I'll, I'll pause video, create this user at the back end, and then I'll come back when there is a time. So I'll go to create a user first for you, enable D1, enable console access. This is optional setting, right? I could go ahead and say, yes, D1, I want you to log into console, okay? In that case, D1 user would require a password. That password I could auto generate, must secure, or I could create a custom password and then ask that user to change the password at the next sign in. That is also possible. And this is a recommended way, but I just want to simulate something here. That's why I am going ahead with some basic information and I'm saying, okay, I would create a user D1 and I have set up a password for that. I click on next. I don't want to save any password here in my browser. Done. User has been created now. Second is set permission for this user, wizard driven process. I am keeping things simple. I won't do anything at all now. We will talk about permission and then we'll come back and make changes. I am now happy. I would go ahead and say, okay, done. And let me create a user here. If you want, you could have added some tag for uh, identification purpose, but just it is a simple account and I have a user created and user can log in with the username D1 and they can uh, this information I can download as a CSV if the need be. Let me simulate user login here. I would go back to the console. I would use this URL. That is my specific uh, account alias URL. I would provide a user of name D1 and I would provide the password I have set. Now my question to you, maybe if you have to pause video, pause it and think, will this user be allowed to log in right now? Answer is yes, this user would be allowed to log in. 
Why? Because we have selected a setting which says console login enabled. So this user is allowed to access console, but can this user now access other AWS services and see things there? Let's try that. Let's say I go to service like S3 and if I can create bucket or perform some operations there or not. So I could see here there is nothing I could see here in bucket and it says you do not have permission to get storage lens detail because I have not explicitly given permission to the user I have just created. Any time a user is created, it would have no permission by default. Anything you want them to do, you have to assign permissions for that. And we will see how to assign permission in a minute. But just as a safeguard, we checked D1 can log in, but it cannot do anything at all in the console because we have not given them permission to do anything apart from just console login. Right. So hopefully this thing is clear. I can view the user here and I would now pause video, create more users and then I'll be back with you and we will then continue the permission part and adding users to the member. So I'm pausing video and creating these users also. All right. So my users are ready. D1, D2, Q1, Q2 and admin 007. These are the user I'm interested in. Now let's go ahead and associate these users to the group. D1, D2 will go to developers group and Q1, Q2 will be associated with the QA group. A user can be member of multiple group, no problem at all, but I am just keeping things simple as of now. I will go to my developers group. I have no users in this group as of now. I would say I want to add user and I am selecting D1 and D2. I won't associate admin to any of the group. Second group, I have QA and here I would be adding again users, which will be Q1 and Q2 and that's what I achieved so far into my business requirement created user added them to the groups but they are not having any permission at all right so this thing is clear I'll come back to the permission part but let's try to understand first what is a permission in case of AWS in case of AWS permission is made up of a policy assigned to an IAM entity I am identity sorry so what is happening here that when i say i want to have a permission defined i have to say which policy and then that policy would be at attached or associated with a user or a user group or with a iam role don't worry about roles we will discuss them in detail what is the role is but right now we are focusing on these two component plus this third component which is called iam policy IAM policies are JSON document. Now JSON may look scary, but it is very easy to understand. Let me go ahead and see some of the pre-existing policies and we will then create more policies on our own. So I'll go to policy section here. So here I see IAM policies. Now the number which is shown here 1037, it can vary for your account. It depends on if you have more policies and somebody created policy in your account. So this number can vary. Don't worry about it. What is inside a policy? If you see policies are written into a JSON format. I will talk more on that, that what it can allow you to do. But here there are two type of policies I can see. One is called AWS managed. One thing it shows it here and if you see this box icon, the orange color, this tells me that this is a AWS managed policy. What it gives me, it gives me some pre-configured policy setting to apply on common type of work, common type of user, common type of groups. So if I feel somebody would need to check AWS health status, I could give them a policy which will allow them to see health status of AWS, right? I want somebody to be acting as a support user for my organization. So I can give them this policy which will have support user. Now there are a lot of information on that. So let me pick up a very simple policy to get started. Here I could search for type, I could search for path and I could search for used as but I am selecting here a policy which is called administrator access and this by default exist you do not have to create it this is the policy i am interested in which says administrator access it is the aws managed job function we expect people to perform admin job and this policy aligns to it if we expect somebody to be a network admin then we can use a aws managed job function policy which will give him or her the required access on network right now my focus is on administrator access 
very short policy let me copy it put it on notepad so it would be easy for you to understand the different aspect associated with it so this is a policy it has a version now a common misconception this is not policy version this is the version of json interpreter or this is formatted in a json of 2012 so 2012 so that is a version number here it is not version of the policy second here are the important stuff so a policy may have one statement like here or it may have multiple statement i have picked up a small policy simple policy to understand but pretty powerful policy let's read it interpret it into plain english effect allow action star represents everything a wild card so i would allow every action on which resource every resource so this is a pretty powerful policy if you associate this policy to someone they would get full access to everything and they would have no problem at all in accessing and performing every action on every resource this is a, what a administrator is supposed to do so i think this would be a good policy to associate with our james bond user so if we go back to our documentation i wanted my admin 007 person to become a full admin and for that i would take this policy and associate or assign it to i am user admin 007 and it would give them permission to perform all the things within my aws account right so i can have multiple ways of doing that attachment i could select that policy and from here i could say i want to attach it that is one option or i could go to the user itself and from there i could have selected so i go ahead to this user admin 007 and now i say okay i want to associate a permission see this this user got a change permission password policy automatically because i wanted this user to change their password and now i want to add more permission here which is my administrator access i am not adding them to a group i am not copying permission from existing user and i am attaching a policy directly to them and that is my administrator access policy obviously you could associate multiple policy to a user group or role and you may have a natural question now that what happens if there is a conflicting policy so we'll discuss about them into the next section but right now i am associating this independent policy to this user which is giving him or her access to all admin task and it will be able to change its password too done that part has been taken care so we achieved one simple task in our business requirement that is to give admin 007 full admin permission let's now focus on little more detailed task which is giving permission only for s3 and only for ec2 that is for my developer policy so i would go ahead here and i would create a policy if you want you could use existing policies if it serves your purpose so if you look here there are 1000 plus policies and let me search for s3 related policy there are policy which will give full access to s3 right so that makes sense because i wanted to give my developer full access to s3 if i want i could go ahead and just associate this policy to them let me again put it into notepad let's read what is happening here json version statement we are allowing but what action only s3 related action nothing beyond it and then s3 object lambda related action nothing beyond it on the resource star so every resource will if that resource is uh, s3 any type of object any s3 object lambda and for any type of resource in that context of s3 we would allow a uh, permission to perform different actions on that so this looks like a good policy to associate with my developer group because i wanted them to have s3 service full access let's see if the similar type of policy exists for ec2 if it is we can use it as it is or you could go ahead and create your own policy so i'll search for now ec2 related policy and here is a policy which is ec2 full access and if you look at it this is little bit more elaborate there are more component inside it so this will still see this statement is one which will allow ec2 access everything on ec2 plus it would allow load balancing function also it would allow cloudwatch which is a monitoring service auto scaling which can add and remove instances automatically and additional things which can be done on that 
so a policy can have multiple statements in that and that whole would be treated as one single policy associated to that user group or a role but what if, if this policy is little too much i don't want to give that much of permission then i can create my own policies don't worry you do not have to write the whole json from scratch we have a policy editor who could create policies for you so we will go here and say i want to create a policy i would answer some question and then i would get my policy created two options if you feel like i want to put lot of json into action and i want to use curly braces comma semicolon go ahead and write everything here but if you feel no i do not want to invest time here i want to use a visual editor go ahead and use that so i would go with the four things service action resource and condition service i am interested right now is ec2 so i would select that ec2 here as a service now see this ec2 may have multiple components so select what you need what kind of actions you want to allow now you can go as granular as you want if you see here these are different actions available here so list action even in list what can be done describe and then different type of operation on describe describe tag search local gateway routes when i have assigned somebody a read permission on ec2 this is all they could do and i could have given them tagging permission and then write is basically modify permission i might have given them so it depends on what granularity level i want to go into very very specific permissions can be given or denied based on your requirement and it's a long list right now i am keeping things simple and say hey let me give you all permission on ec2 so i am selecting all ec2 actions would be allowed for this particular user let me collapse everything and allow this all ec2 action so this will incorporate 162 list 29 selected and two tagging 387 of right and five of permission management that is all available on this particular policy you could see everything has been selected here i could be selective in saying which specific resource this permission would apply i don't want to put restriction as of now so i now would be saying i am okay for you to access every resource if it is ec2 related so i would go ahead here and say okay i don't want to put restriction on you at all let me go back and say all resources rather than being specific here now i get a warning as a best practice define permission for only specific resource and specific account that makes sense which we call principle of least privilege so only give the required permission nothing beyond it but right now i am keeping things simple for a demo and i am not adding any additional condition not adding any tags and now i would say let me review the policy i have to give it a name just so that it will display at the top of my list i am giving it a name ec2 full access this is the name i have given and now you could see here that what is the summary of it it will give ec2 full access on all resources when no condition defined and now my policy is ready all right so my policy got created that is one part creating policy would not automatically take it into effect second thing would be to associate this policy to the entity of my choice in this case instead of associating policy to individual user d1 and d2 i would associate it to the developers group and it will automatically come to d1 and d2 and any other member who would be later added into developer so this is much better way of managing things rather than associating policy individually let's associate policy on a group level so i'll again go to my groups here and in my developers group i am interested to assign policies and as i said i could have multiple permissions added so this is my permission policy now if you see these two words they are very interchangeably used and i make the same mistake also policy is the json document and when it is combined together then with a i am entity user group or role then it becomes a permission so i am adding permission here by attaching policies first is ec2 full access plus i also want to give them s3 full access also so i search for s3 related services and here is my s3 full access both of them i am associating right so if you see this i have one policy which is customer managed which we created and then one which is aws managed so you can use any permutation combination shouldn't be a problem 
one thing about aws managed policy is you cannot edit them aws maintain these policies for you so if i go to this particular policy let's say billing or the one which i have created i would have option to edit the policy if i go here and then select that hey i want to edit i would be allowed no issues on that let it come this is my policy and see the edit policy button i could go ahead and edit things if the need be but editing is not allowed with your aws policy so if aws has created the policy they may edit it but not you you are just having a read only copy and you can use it for your own purpose if the need be so be aware customer managed policy can be edited aws managed policy cannot be edited and let me prove that to you by going to that policy and i won't see a edit button i would still see the content of it but there will be no edit button i can still see the content so hopefully this thing is clear so i achieved one task where my users are part of group and the group has been given the permission to perform s3 and ec2 nothing beyond plus i have also achieved my admin users access admin can perform full administrative action d1 d2 can access ec2 and s3 let's focus on qas now we would add these to the member and then we would associate these policies maybe we have to create it one is they can only read amazon s3 object so let's go ahead and create this policy first this looks like a granular policy or maybe i want to make it as granular as possible so let me go ahead to policies and create a policy here let's say create a policy i would then provide some details on that which service i am interested in i am interested into s3 service only so i would select s3 here as a service and what specific action i want to allow now business requirement says we want to allow read permission now read itself can have multiple sub permissions inside if you see read read is made up of all these settings so do you want to give everything if yes why not but if you want to be very selective then you can say i want to give you only get object permission nothing beyond it right so this is one single action i am allowing which is read but what only object get object most of the read permission are get or most of the view permissions are called describe permission so i am giving a get object permission here and that is one selected if i want i could say i want to allow it only on a specific aws s3 bucket amazon s3 bucket but i am keeping it simple so i say all resource and i am not putting condition i will use condition into the next example right now i am just creating a simple s3 read only policy only for the objects nothing else so i am having this policy which is my s3 read only done and i created a policy as i said before just creating policy won't make it applicable you have to associate it later so i created it and then i will associate it in some time but let me now focus on one more policy which looks interesting and which is obviously require us to do little extra because we want to restrict deployment of only t2.micro and that to only in ireland region nothing beyond it so let's see how we can customize this setting also if the need be now i'm showing it it doesn't mean that every every permi every policy would require these kind of settings but if you want you could and we will see how it is done so let me create a policy so i am clear which service amazon s3 as a service so let me select that service what i want this users to do i want them to create a ec2 instance now that api call of creating a ec2 instance is called run instance as a call and you would need to know that from documentation or from somewhere else but we do not have here some setting which says create instance the e api call which you make is called a run instance api call and if you can see there is a huge list and i am interested into the run now this can be very complicated to search if you see this thing long list so there is a search option here i could go ahead and say hey i am interested only into the run related task so i could say run instance is done that is one specific setting i have selected okay only run instance then 
on which resource again i could be selective i would then right now say i am creeping it all resources but if you see this option i could restrict it to a specific image a specific key pair a specific security group association a specific volume for that so those all granularities are there i am keeping it simple but right now i want to use conditions here conditions will put additional layer of control on your policy one common thing for highly critical actions could be mfa required so if let's say i wanted this to be a uh, action which will delete a uh, important thing i could say hey i want to allow only if the user was authenticated through multi factor authentication otherwise don't allow that so it's a very common thing another common condition you could put is the resource ip so if you know that your developer always connect over vpn and they always have this ip address assigned to them you could put a restriction that run instance only allowed if the request is coming from this specific ip address and similarly there are more conditions available too many of them i would say these conditions are divided into two categories one is a global condition which would be available on every specific action every specific resource called via epoch time maybe you could have principal arn on that arn stand for amazon resource name you could have a source account who could do these things to you you could go ahead and put some token timing for that services you can put some more user information so these all are referred as my global settings which will apply to everything or which can apply to any of the component should not be problem so i could go ahead and put a contractor into place and put them some policy of current time and epoch time and only that time the policy would be valid i am here selecting another thing which is called your see this this stands for aws colon this represent it's a global setting but if i go further there are service level condition and they may specify ec2 colon start obviously there are some exceptions for tags but other than that all are ec2 colon starting point so this will give me that what i want to achieve so my requirement is i want to allow only ireland as a region for ec2 run instance call so i could select here ec2 and i would probably see something here which says region see this and in that region i would say i want to allow for default qualifier and i would say string equals and i could put the eu dash west dash 1 this is a code or this is the name of ireland region which is referred in apis as eu west 1 and that's what i have provided and i could add this condition so this is one condition i added string equal eu west 1 what if if i want to add another condition yes you can you can add another condition and in that condition i am now specifying i want to have a ec2 and this time i want to put a restriction only on the region sorry uh, instance type so i am going to ec2 and here i am specifying a instance type as a setting i can go ahead and say string equals and could say t2.micro so only t2.micro would be allowed nothing beyond it but what if if i want to be little more generic and say anything starting with t2 so that kind of setting is also there instead of string equals you could say string is like and here you could use a wild card which is t2 dot star that will now address t2 micro t2 nano t2 extra large t2 double extra large if it exists in that region so that will be giving you flexibility to that anything in t2 dot family will be allowed if it is selected into ireland region and you are just issuing a run instance call not stop instance not delete instance we would allow that and now once i am happy i would add that as a policy and i'll show you the output json in a minute so you would have a better idea that how that policy is implemented so i created a policy here right i hope you are following along uh, we will take 2 3 more minutes before ending this section and then we will discuss the remaining part into the next section so this is my t2 only policy i would again copy it and put it on a notepad for easy viewing for you so that you can see what have achieved here so see this 
version is same but we have new statement here which says SID and which says visual editor means this statement was added through visual editor which we have used as a graphical tool effect is allow action ec2 run instance call only nothing else on all resources but with these two condition and this is an end statement if both of them are true then only allow first one says string equals eu west one and second says string like ec2 instance type is t2 dot star so only if it is t2 dot micro t2 nano in eu west one and the call is run instance i am going to allow it otherwise i am not Anything which is not been allowed is automatically getting denied. So you have to explicitly give permission to specific things. Remaining thing automatically remain denied. And now I could go to my groups, which is my QA group, and I would associate this policy to them. And I have to associate two policy, if you remember. One is for S3. So I will attach a policy, which is related to S3 read-only access. And another is T2 only. And once done, I have achieved the business requirement I had, allowing developers with D1, D2 with these things, and Q1, Q2 with this, and admin 007 as full administrator access. So to summarize, what is a policy? It is a JSON document. And when you combine a policy with IAM entities, that would create a permission for you. We'll discuss more detail about IAM into the next chapter. So enjoy your time and I'll speak to you into next section. Thank you. Let's talk about different policies. There are different type of policies in AWS and which sometimes confuses people. I'll try my best to explain you the basic details and probably you would have a better understanding once you finish this module. So if I start with policies, the very common one which we have seen so far is IAM policies. This is something which you create in IAM, what we created for S3 for EC2, that is a IAM policy. And in IAM policy, these are referred as managed policies. Whatever we created is a managed policy. Managed policies are standalone policies that you can attach to multiple user group and role should not be a problem at all. So you create policy once like I created a S3 read only policy. I have associated with with the QA group later. If you have a group called marketing and they also need the same type of access, you could reuse that policy and later maybe just one user also needs that access. Let's say Ashish use X need S3 read only access. You could associate to user directly. So user group or role all can access all can be attached with this policy. The benefit of this is that it allows you to reuse the policy and they also have versioning in these policies. So you would be able to maintain multiple versions. You can have up to five versions of the policy. So maybe you implement something test if it works, keep it. Otherwise you revert back to your previous version. So versioning is supported with your managed policy. Now, when it comes to managed, that managed policy either could be a AWS managed policy. We saw that with a symbol of that icon, which is in front of it. Let me quickly go to console and show that to you. So I'm here again in console. I am going to IAM and I would go to policy section to see these policies which are available. I'm here into policy section and all my policies are displayed. So these are managed policy. One of them, sorry, four of them are customer managed and remaining are AWS managed. So that is the differentiation which I'm saying. And if I'm talking about versioning, let me show that too. So if I go to this policy, just say T2 only, and now I decide I want to modify something inside, it would be tracked as a policy version. Unless you specify the default version is the latest one, like currently version one is default. But if I go to permissions here, and now I say I want to edit something here, and I want to allow only, let's say T2 micro, nothing beyond it. So I could go back and say, I want to perform some addition here. Let me add this setting here. And instead of T2 dot star, let's say I say, I want now T2 dot micro only. Maybe I made a mistake and I had to be very specific and only allow T2 micro. So I save this changes. And once I'm done with that, this would be treated as a different set of same policy with a different version and now you could see policy got updated 
and if I check in policy version I have one which was allowing t2 dot star access and I have version 2 which is default is allowing t2 dot micro so if you want you could just access this policy you could set this as a default or delete it shouldn't be a problem that flexibility is there so coming back to our discussion manage policy giving you reusability giving you versioning and some of them are aws managed pre-created for you you cannot add it and then what we created is a customer managed policy aws managed are for very common use cases which aws fields people use like network administrator support user administrator so they have created these pre-configured policies for us if i feel i have a specific use case I want to create myself all the configurational setting. I could go ahead and create a customer managed policy. Right now, in I am policy. Now, some people may debate what I am saying next. I would say there is one more setting or configuration which is called in line policy. Now, some people say this is something which exists outside of I am and it is called resource policy. I my verification here is. I would consider that it as an inline policy. I'll show that example in a minute. Now, what we created into a managed policy, that policy could be attached to multiple users, group, role, whatever you prefer. What if I want that I want to create a policy only in the context of this user and it's a scope only should be this user, nothing beyond it. Maybe a very specific use case. I want to allow only this person, let's say a EMR service, nothing, no one else should be allowed to use that. If I put that into a managed policy, then probably maybe by mistake, somebody may attach it to another user and they may get that type of access. So in case I have a very specific use case that I want to scope down the policy only to a specific entity and that could be a user, group or role that time I would use a in line policy. So let me explain theoretical detail of it. This one is considered as embedded in principle. It is within that principle. It maintains a strict one to one relationship between a policy and the entity. It cannot be reused. It stays with that entity. If you delete that entity, it would be deleting the policy also. But in case of managed policy, they are created separately. Even if I deleted the user, the policy would still stay and I can reuse it, but not within line. So these are for very, very specific use cases. And some of the software, third party software, may frown upon these policies as a security risk because the challenge is you can't track this policy in a central place so current whatever policies i have i could come here to policy section and i can see what all is available and not only see but i could go to that policy and even see to whom it is being applied as of now so that will give me a better approach toward identifying that who is actually using this policy, but just going to the policy. So this one as to read only this policy is used only by the QA group, no one else. But if I go to my administrator access policy, probably you would see admin 007 and you would also see their admin user also. So I am going to my administrator access policy and we will see what happens there. Come on admin this is my administrator access and if i check its usage i would be seeing that with the with multiple users probably this is the policy and i go to its policy usage and see this this is associated to two user and i can associate more users to it groups to it should not be a problem but if i am looking for an inline policy let me go ahead and select a user Let's see what I want to allow him or her to do. Let's say this is my user called KMS demo user. Right? I go to this user and if you see here, I have a policy attached which is called inline and its name is 00 KMS list key policy. This policy name is not visible into my central policies. This policy exists only within the pretext of that particular user. So this user policy doesn't have 
significance outside of that user and if i want to let's say create one more user here and call it or let's go ahead and use this user only kms demo user and i could say i want to add a permission and i want to add a in line policy on that so let's say like that what it would allow me it would allow me to create a policy only with the context of this and let's say to this user i want to give emr access emr is a Hadoop managed Hadoop service if you want to use I'm just using here as an example and I want to say only the describe cluster permission nothing beyond it and on not a specific cluster all cluster you could describe done and now I have created a policy let's call it 00 EMR describe cluster policy done. and I have created it now this policy is in context of only this user nothing beyond it no one else can see this policy and this one is treated as an inline policy you can use inline policy plus associate other policies also they can be combined together so that is not at all a problem but why i would use it only if i don't want this policy to be reused and i want once somebody delete this user the policy should also get deleted with it that's why i may use inline policy otherwise i should be using the standard policies which are my managed policy so i hope this by this time you have a better understanding on what is your inline policy let me read it again it is embedded in a principal entity user group or role and it maintains a strict one-to-one -one relationship between a policy and the entity and as soon as you delete that entity the policy would be gone too so that is another type of policy which is called your in-line policy i'll talk about one more type of policy now which is called resource policy and this has a very significant meaning for some services so let me explain it so i'm focusing now on resource policies Resource policies are attached to a resource like a S3 bucket, a VPC endpoint, KMS key, API gateway, Lambda function, and some additional services. These resource policy are only for few services, not every service supports a resource policy. So what is the difference between a IAM policy and a resource policy? Let me explain that thing through an example, through an analogy, so you would have a better understanding of these things. Let's talk about going to a theater. London is very famous for its theater. There are a lot of plays happening. It's a very happening thing for theater artists and all. So let's consider that you want to go to a theater. Why I'm taking this example? I have a friend and she is an actor and she keeps on performing on this theater. So whenever she is performing, she would say, hey, Ashish, if you have time, you could just come and see the play you should enjoy it so that's fine no problem at all but obviously this is a private event in a way you can't just anybody can enter you would need to go through security to enter into that theater now one option for me to be in the theater is that i could buy a ticket the ticket would have entitlement for me to go into theater depending on which show i have bought the ticket for the date and time i would be going to the security present my ticket and i would be allowed to go inside that is one way of going inside theater but as she is an actress in the theater she says that hey you do not have to buy a ticket our theater security person maintains a guest list and i would add your name or i will get your name added on to that guest list so what i have to do now i have to just walk up to the security guard and say hey i am ashish and this is my credential or show my id and he would check on the guest list and if i am valid if my name is there it would be allowing me to go inside so that's how i entered into the theater so two ways to enter a theater either i carry a ticket or have my name on the guest list what you just saw are two type of policies if i am carrying the access with me or the ticket is attached to me that is a iam policy i have associated the ticket or the permission to the identity itself that is your iam policy on the other hand the guest list which you have is a resource policy resources theater and it is preventing people from going in unless they are allowed through a resource policy. So resource policies are associated with a resource, whereas IAM policies 
are associated to user group or role so hope this is clear as i said resource policy doesn't exist for everything some common services like amazon s3 supports it then aws lambda supports this particular type of policy you could have this policy on vpc endpoint if you remember we discussed that in s3 we talked about bucket policy so that bucket policy is an example of a resource policy which is associated directly with the resource itself so resource policy would be on the resource they won't be displayed here but to check them you have to go to those specific entities like if you go to s3 in s3 there would be a bucket policy where you should see that entry or if you go to vpc endpoint then you would be creating policies on that so let's say i go to vpc endpoint and here i would have a policy to create with when i am creating a vpc endpoint so that is your resource policy saying it again not every service would support it some services support it and we will see what happens if there is a conflicting information and all so don't worry we will talk about policy evaluation logic that how the processing actually happens let me go to endpoints here and in this endpoint if i am trying to create an endpoint let's say i want to talk to the node glue notebook service here this is my notebook service and here i want to give it a notebook endpoint and then i would have which vpc it should be connected into i selected that subnet is fine and security group and see this policy so this policy only protect that vpc endpoint and again it is a json document nothing fancy here same type of thing which we have done so i have these policy for sqs s3 vpc endpoint i am so let's say i want to create it for vpc endpoint again i would say what i want to allow to whom i want to allow which specific service and what specific action on that resource so i have to provide a arn in this case that will tell me whether it is a resource policy or not right so if you see a policy and if there is a resource section in that it is considered as a resource policy i'll show you in a minute what i mean by that so let me give you an example here that how you can identify whether it is a resource policy or whether it is a iam policy let's see some examples here now let me read this policy which has a id statement version detail and then it has a sid and all that is common here i have action and i have a very specific setting here with says principal this is a give away that this is a policy which says which principal are allowed or denied using this so in a resource policy you would have a statement which will describe principal like here i have another resource policy for api gateway here i have information of principal instead of saying everyone this one says principal is everyone means everyone is allowed or denied instead i could be selective like here is an example i say i would allow what execute api invocation call only if this is coming from user called alice from this account id and maybe i could have a, another account id added here so this is how i am saying who is allowed here so who statement represent principal here but on the very right what you see is a iam policy in iam policy i have taken a very simplest one here administrative access you won't be seeing any of the principal section because look at it what happens this policy is associated to a principal so you do not have to explicitly say which principal to whomever you will attach this policy that would automatically become the principal but in case of a resource policy the entry have to be explicitly added like this one here so hopefully this thing is clear and you have a better idea on different type of policies we may have let me quickly summarize this module so you have a better idea so policies are either iam and resources iam which are managed managed is something which helps me to reuse the policy which support versioning and we can attach it to a user group or role if i need to 
in manage i may decide to use a aws manage policy which i can't add it but this exists for many use cases to start quickly if i want very specific access i would create my own customer policies which is my customer manage policy with your entities you could also associate a in line policy it is a scope down policy only for that entity nothing beyond it would be accessing this policy so this is my in line policy or better wording would be embedded policy right and then one more bifurcation is a resource policy and this resource policy is attached to a specific resource or s3 bucket vpc and point kms keys and many more services but not all services right remember the analogy i have gave you if you are sorry if you are carrying the ticket or the permission it is a identity policy i am policy and if your resource has a list of allowing you that is a resource policy and we saw some example the differentiating factor is this statement which is principal which is missing into your i am policy so i hope you learned something new and i'll see you into the next chapter thank you we will discuss about roles there let's talk about roles now roles are one of the highest misunderstood topic of aws iam and i'll try my best to explain you some of the basic concept i may use some very crazy analogies here but probably once you finish this chapter you would have a better understanding on aws iam roles and roles are very interesting topic and they help you a lot in keeping your environment safe and then giving only the required privilege to people and they solve a lot of conflicting problems which may arise let's go ahead and talk about that to understand role i'll take a example of jim carrey probably most of you know him and if you are of my age probably you have seen lot of movies of him he is a very versatile canadian american actor let's see what we mean here by role so he is an actor and actors would be performing into different movies and let's say if i take jim's example he has performed in different movies and he played different roles there so he is a person and when he is let's say acting for bruce almighty he would be into a different getup he would have a different makeup put and then he would start performing role of god probably he is well known for his movie the mask so when he was performing in that movie mask he would put this kind of a makeup and become a green thing and another famous movie is as ventura pet detective here he played played role of a pet detective so he is same person but depending on which movie he is performing for he would be assuming different role he would perform his task finish whatever was required and again become himself jim carrey rather than being in a god costume or in god outfit every day or in green thing he would become himself so what is happening here that he is assuming these personas once he assumes this persona he would perform whatever is required for that role and then will revert back to who he is that is exactly what iam roles are all about so we will see how we can use roles and one word you have to be aware here we are using a word here which is called assume you do not log in to a role you you log in as an user and afterwards you assume a role so you should be a person first to become any of them right it's not a robot who can become bruce almighty or the green thing or pet detective so you should be a user and once you are a user you would be given permission to assume some of the roles now as the uh, as the discussion has come up for this movie the mask this is the best example of role i could find in the real life so if you remember this movie he is playing role of two persons here one is stanley ipkiss a bank employee and when he get this magical mask and when he puts this mask he becomes a completely completely different person i have put a youtube video link here just in case you want to revive your memories of it please go through that and what is happening here that he is now wearing that mask 
let me switch off the volume here so he is now wearing that mask and as soon as he wears the mask he transforms into something else it won't be that painful it is just the explanation i am giving but what happens now once he finishes assuming the role he has become a completely completely different person as you could see this is what is happening here we assumed a role and once he's done he would remove the mask and he will become stanley epkis again that's what we are doing here is assuming a role right hope you have a better idea of what we mean by assuming a role now one more crazy example you have to understand here is something called trust policy now i am taking example here of a fictional character which is called thor god of thunder and he has a specific hammer which is called minyor and this can only be lifted by thor as this minyor trust only thor right so if it is a hammer called minyor this can only be lifted by thor no one else is allowed or i would put it into a english word here which says minyor trust thor and then only it is allowing him to lift up that hammer so this is we are discussing here something called a trust policy now people would be arguing here that hey yes in the marvel comics this hammer can be now lifted by captain america and by another character called vision so yes i agree consider that in this manure's trust policy now we have name of thor and we have captain america's name also put here and we have also put vision's name here so he can also pick up this hammer so in the policy of this particular hammer three persons are trusted thor captain america and vision all right keep this two example at back of your mind we would implement it and you would then understand this whole thing in a better situation now let me come out of comic world and let's talk about some very business specific things here so we are giving, getting a business requirement this says we want to allow q1 user to assume a role giving him or her permission equivalent to a developer user so maybe a qa person want to perform operation what like a developers time to time they on the regular basis they would be a qa person and they would perform their task but maybe for testing purposes they have to become a developer and see from developer perspective what type of permissions are there or maybe some x number of task has to be completed as a developer or some setting change requires them to become a developer so we want what that we are a member of qa qa group and the user is q1 i want him or her to become a developer user let's see how we would implement this in our console we are assuming the qa group exists developer group exists and now we would build on top of it so this process will be made up of three steps and i'll do this in console so you would be able to relate all these concept as we speak all right so what this process would be made up of let's talk about the three steps which will be required here give me a minute let me bring it up again so three step process first is we have to create a role if you remember we created user we created groups so similarly in iam i can create a role so let me go ahead into iam first and we would be then creating a role okay i am here in aws console and i am going to iam as a service and in this i am service i would select role section and would create a role once you go to roles there will always be some existing role which aws creates to facilitate some of the regular tasks so these roles may exist on beforehand if you see these are 21 role existing and they may be service linked role and other bean stock role or ec2 role so it depends right now my interest is to create a role and let me give it a very easy name for remembering so i would give it a name but let's see what is here it says trusted entity type that means if this is a hammer who can lift it this says if i am a role who is allowed to assume me the role can be assumed by a aws service a role can be assumed by entities within an aws account like a user a role can be assumed by users coming from web identity 
maybe your user got authenticated by third parties like facebook google amazon web services and now you want them to perform some operation in your account and they are allowed to assume a role so that can happen or it could be coming from saml saml is more of a enterprise authentication mechanism which is your active directory based directory services ldap they all use saml authentication behind the scene so your user may be coming from there or you may have created some custom trust policy my intention is my both user exist into the same account and i want to utilize this setting here which says aws account a role can be assumed cross account too and that's why if you see here to whom i am trusting i am trusting an aws account is this the same account you are trusting answer is yes i am connected to this account 5031 and i am trusting this account i could add additional information like require multi factor authentication require external id but i am keeping things simple here i would say i want this user sorry i want someone from this account to assume this role all right go ahead what will be the permission you want to associate i'll come back to that in a minute for now let me just go ahead and say hey i don't want to add any permission at all now next thing i would give it a name so let's give it a simple name let qa become dev this is the role we have created this is a role which will allow qa to become a dev and if you see as soon as i created a role there is some specific information which is being added here this says select trusted entity so who is trusted so that is principle here this account is trusted for this i could select some more settings here i could add permissions if i need to but right now i would just say i want to create role i would come back to this in a minute my first task is done that i have created a role with the default setting whatever is present here my role is now ready and i could search for that role here probably it should be displayed here this is my let role let qa become dev this is a role which has been created so first part done for what i wanted second part is add qa as q1 as a trusted principal to assume the role so role is ready who we are allowing or trusting to assume this particular role so for that i have to go to this role and in that role i would see trust relationship in the default condition there would be a user added here which is root which is representing that this role is trusted by users coming from this account but which specific user i could provide information here and i can say edit trust policy and in this case i would add a q1's name so that we can assume this role through q1 now i want to do one more thing i do not remember the name of that user probably so i have to go to iam and check the arn of that user amazon resource name so i just wanted to give it to q1 let's see if i have a user with that name or a different name and i would use it so i have a q1 user here and this is the arn of my user q1 this is what i would be referencing for the trust of this role so currently it is being trusted by root as you could see here what root is trusted with assuming of a role and here you say add principal whom you want to add so i could select a principal that could be a role could be a session here i am interested into i am user but if you want you could have your users coming from other federations or they can be any other aws service too but right now i am interested in only this particular user and you see this thing i would provide the account id i would provide the name of the user which i already copied so i will just paste it so now my user q1 is being added as a principal which will allow to assume a role right if you want you could manually also edit this information let's say i don't want to keep root you should not be doing it but i'm just giving an example that this modification can be done and i have now added only q1 as a authorized person to assume the role and now i have updated the policy so done this role can be assumed by q1 but once it assumes a role what next 
what q1 can perform because if you look at this role this role doesn't have any permission for what it can perform it just says what can be who can assume that but it doesn't say what can be done by this role because in the permissions we have zero so the next task will be to add permission to the role which are equivalent to a developer user because we wanted QA to become a developer. So let's first see what permission my developer user has and then we would replicate that in that setting or those policy and associate them with my QA, use, QA role also. So let's go ahead and this is my user settings. I would go to my users which is let's say d1 and i could see d1 has two permission one is ec2 full access another is amazon s3 full access and how they are coming they are being coming from the group called developers so whatever permissions i have added to developers group i should associate this also with the role we have just created so i'll go back to my role section let me go ahead to select this role and I would say permissions. I want to add two permissions here. One is the EC2, right? So I have a EC2 related permission. I could select a Amazon EC2 full access permission here. I hope I remember same thing, right thing, attach a policy, done. And what else was there? Let me quickly check again. Sorry, I forgot. So let me go to the groups. Let's go to developers, what we had here the permissions we had was sorry amazon s3 full access and a custom policy we had ec2 full access so let's go ahead and fix that problem so i'll go to roles and select the role again afterwards i would remove the wrong policy which i have added so the idea is you could add whatever you want but we want to just follow the business requirement so we would just add the required permission so we'll attach policy and see this inline policy can also be attached so one is ec to full access that is the one and then i am also interested into s3 related policy which is s3 full access so both the policy i am trying to attach to this particular role Right. So now it can access S3 fully and it can access EC2 fully should not be a problem at all. Now we are ready to see if my user can assume this role or not. So I hope this thing is clear and you got a better idea. I would show it how to log off and log in in a minute. But let me summarize one more information here. So what we did, we created a role. We added Q1 as a trusted principal to assume the role. We added permission to role which are equivalent to developer user and then we can assume this role. So let's go ahead and do this thing into the console. I would keep this number ready and I would be logging with the user called Q1. I would sign out or if I want, I could switch from here. Now let me do this also so that you can see it. So let's say I'm now trying to say switch role. Okay. What I was, I was logged in as an admin user and then I invoked the switch role API. This request I am saying I want to switch role. All right, let's see what is needed to switch a role. To switch a role, you need to have the account ID. So this is the account ID. That clearly means I could have put different accounts ID too. If they have trusted me to assume, I could have tr assumed the role across account too. And which role? So I would need role ARN. I do not have that role ARN as of now. Let me go ahead and grab that role ARN and I would then come back to that sign in screen. This is my role and here should be ARN of the role. See you this. So see this ARN, I am role, let QA become developer. I copied that and now I am saying, okay, I want to assume the role. Remember who I was or who am I? Who am I? I am currently logged in as an admin and now I am saying, hey, I want to switch the role. Let's see what happens. Nothing. I am not able to go through. Why? Because I am currently logged in as an admin and there is no way admin is allowed to assume a role. It is only allowed to be assumed by QA member. Right? All right. Let me close this one. I would then quickly log off and log in as a QA user and then we will see how our role switching works in that particular case. So I am now not logging as an admin. 
I am logging as a Q1 user. I am providing, hopefully I remember the password which is right and I don't want to remember this account. Let me just sign in for a while. Now there was a policy probably which says change the password. So that's why I'm getting this password change policy associated here. But it's not that you will always get that thing. I would probably put policy here and now I confirm the password change and now I am logged in as a user Q1. Now I can't create S3 bucket. Why? Because I do not have permission as a user Q1. Only permission I have to perform read on the operation but nothing beyond it. Right. So let's go ahead and see if we can create a bucket here. Let's see this create bucket option is not available to me. Why? Because I am Q1. Now I say OK Q1. Let's see how the world looks from the developer's angle. So let me switch the role. So now I'm trying to switch the role and log in as the developer person. So I have to provide the account and I have to provide the role information only, not the whole detail, but just the name of the role I have to provide. And if you look here, I could have even selected a different color for the my UI so that I would know that I am currently logged in into a different account altogether. Let me select this green color here to identify that console which will open for me. So I was a QA user and now I am trying to become a developer and now I say let me switch the role. And once I switch the role, you could see clearly here I have become a QA. Sorry, I have become a developer and now if I go back to S3 as this role has permission for S3, I should be able to access other services, whatever is allowed and create resources. So as you could see here, now my create bucket is available plus any bucket which are there are also displayed to me. So that was a quick way that how we have shifted from one person to another role and then perform the task we wanted and the idea is once your work is done you should switch back to what you were you should not be permanently using it this is considered as a temporary credential so QA did what they wanted once they have done that as a developer they have come back to QA now this is a good practice too like if I go ahead and talk about that how you should perform things most of the time if a administrator is seasoned or if they are uh, following best practices they would always log in with a read only user credential right they don't want to always always carry their admin credential everywhere so probably they would regularly log in with read only user to monitor things to check things how things are working and if they have to modify anything then only they go ahead and assume an admin role and once the work is done they would come back to read only user so that is the best approach to follow if you are concerned about security so you should log in mostly as read only and only when you need that time only you should elevate your privilege and become a administrator so hopefully this thing is clear to you that what we can do for assuming our role. Now let's summarize what we discussed and I'll talk a little bit more on behind the scene logic here. So we achieved what we wanted. What happened here that we had a role. Role is always denoted in AWS documentation or architectural diagram as a hat. You are wearing one hat which is one type of role which you are assuming. So what we are seeing here I am policy can be assigned to a role that will tell you what can you do after you assume a role and role itself will have a trust policy which will tell who can assume this particular role. Role assumption can be done by an IAM user if you want like we have seen and it can be done by other AWS services also. Let's say we have a EC2 machine and that EC2 machine is running some code this code wants to access an Amazon S3 bucket. Obviously, we need credential. One option for us is we could hard code those, hard code those credential into the code, which is not at all a good design. Instead, we could associate a role to EC2 machine, which is also called instance profile. And based on that, we can now that role would have S3 access permission and this code would now eventually be allowed to access S3 service. So this is one example. 
A very common example in the similar line is about lambda as a service. So when you have a lambda function, lambda function wants to talk to other AWS services. It would be associated with a role and that role would have some policy associated which will allow a lambda function to perform those operations. So hopefully this thing is clear to you, right? So policies you could assign to user, you could assign to group. Policy can be assigned to roles. Roles can be assumed only. Roles cannot be logged into. So you assume roles. You never log into a role. You first log in with an individual user and then you assume a role. Some facts to remember. Roles can be assumed within AWS account or across account. We already saw that. At a time, only one role can be assumed, right? I use example at a time on your head, you can wear only one hat, not more than that. So you can assume one role. Once you have switched back, you can then assume another role if the need be. Trusted entities to assume a role can be external to. They could be coming from any SAML provider or any web identity provider. No issues on that. What happens behind the scene? Behind the scene, there is a service called AWS Security Token Service or STS, which generates a set of temporary credential that you can use to access your AWS resources. So this service is doing all the magic behind the scene. It is verifying the request which is coming in and then it generates a temporary credential and those temporary credential are then used to perform operation. Now, if STS, uh, STS confuses you, let me give you a, another example to understand STS. Probably you have applied for visas for some country sometime in, or some time in your life. Right? What like if I'm talking about a one prominent visa service provider, what they have, they have a two step process. As soon as you enter after booking an appointment and you reach out on that particular day when you have appointment, they would have a verification counter. This counter person would check all your basic information, whether you have valid document, whether you are on the right time of the appointment and all. And if everything is fine, they give you a token number, something like this. And then you wait. And when you get your name called or token number called, like here, if you could see, this lady is waiting for a person with token number 035. So if this was your token number, you would go there. And on this processing counter, you would have your visa application submitted, right? How this relate to AWS? Let me now show that information to you. So token was generated here. And that token was used to perform some operation on this processing counter. Exactly same thing happens with AWS. Let me show two examples here. First one here is I have a dev account and dev account wants to access some resources. What this dev user can do, it can assume a role into a product account. So this is a role they are assuming. Once they assume a role, a temporary set of credentials are given to them. And then they use that temporary set of credential to make requests to the required resource. So this is what is happening here, which is your security token service running with or working within the same uh, context of AWS. But it can happen that your user may be coming from outside. The example on the right is of that. So we may have a mobile client or a soft software or application. It is not having a AWS credential. It is having an Amazon.com credential, but Amazon.com credential are not understood by my services like DynamoDB or any other AWS services. Those AWS services requires an AWS credential or they want a token. So what happens in this case, your client would make a request to STS service. STS service will verify whether it is a valid request, whether this user has a token from Amazon.com or not. And once it verifies, it delivers a temporary security credential to you. And through this temporary security credential, now you can access other AWS services if the need be. So security token service plays an important role in all these communication. And here I have link for those documentation. So go ahead and check these, how you can use a single user to access multiple accounts through CLI. And this another blog post is about how to use web identity federation so here this documentation talks about lots of additional stuff which can help you 
Let me show one more example here and you can also try this. This is your Web Identity Federation Playground. This is a hosted service. So what you could do here, you could go to the service and it will show you the process of it. So what are three step process if I want to perform something in AWS, I would need AWS credential, which I do not have. I am currently logged into a web browser. So on this Web Identity Federation, what you could do, you could test this. I won't use my credential here, but if you want, you could just put in your Google, Facebook and Amazon credential and then you would say, OK, I want to send a request to STS service that STS service would respond me back with my credential. So I would obtain temporary security credential here and those temporary security credential I would then use to access an Amazon S3 bucket and here you would see the access key generated access key ID token validity and all the operation and then I would go ahead and say list bucket so that time my temporary credential will be used to access that s3 bucket or list the object within that s3 bucket so play around with this thing the link will be in the resources section it would walk you through the whole process of all the API call which are being made to STS service behind the scene so I hope you have a better understanding on roles now and I'll talk to you into the next section. Thank you. Let me summarize whatever we have discussed so far in IAM and it would be a good summary to retain all the knowledge which we have whatever we discussed. So in AWS identity and access management, we can create users. We can create groups, right? And we can have roles created and we can have policies. Policies is a JSON document. It would allow you to access something or deny something. These policies can be associated to a role. These policies can be associated to a group. Policies can be associated to user also. There are different type of policies too. A user can belong to a group, right? A user can assume a role if needed. A role can be assumed by some resources like a Amazon EC2 instance can assume a role and once it assumes a role, maybe it would be getting permission to talk to other resources like it could be Amazon S3 service or it could be a Lambda service who is assuming a role and now talking to DynamoDB as a service. So it could be number of services who can assume a role and afterward they would be allowed to access other services provided they have been attached with the right policy for it. So a role can be assumed by a resource, a role can be assumed by a user and a user once it has permission can access AWS resources, right? So AWS services can access other services or a user can also access a service. This role we discussed, this role could be coming from IAM, right? But the user who is assuming a role could be coming from outside, which can be identity federation should not be a problem at all. Plus, Policies can be associated with resources too. We saw this resource policy. So these resource policy could be like your Amazon S3 bucket policy. Then we have AWS KMS service, which creates an encryption key. It has key policies. We have VPC endpoint. They have VPC endpoint policies. So those are referred as your resource policy. So policies can be associated to your resources too. So hopefully this thing is clear and you have a better understanding on how actually AWS IAM works. That was a quick summary on AWS IAM. Thank you for going through this training. I hope you found it useful and learned something new. Let me give you some additional resources to broaden your knowledge about cloud and learn more technical things. So these additional resources are listed here. The links are there into the description panel. You can click on those links and it will take you to those resources which I'm talking about. First resource I want to talk about here is a service summary cards book which I have authored and it is now available on Amazon. Sometimes AWS documentation can be so lengthy and so complex and one thing can lead to another and your focus can get diverted in a very easy fashion. So what I did here, I have created a single service page, a single page talking about all the important aspect about the service. What is the service? Why I use it? When to use it? 
where the service would be running who would be maintaining that service how the service functions how much i would end up paying for this particular service and all of this information in a concise and a very easy to read format in just one single page so one page one service that's how i use this book how i created this book this book is available for all 12 certifications as of now and i try to plan i plan to keep it updated as the new release or new certifications are coming up so check this book you can find this book on amazon in a kindle and paperback format and if you are using amazon kindle unlimited subscription you would be able to get this book for free so it's a nice read and it is targeted towards individual certifications and you should be able to get lot of information on one single page whether you are preparing for interview or an exam or just want to know about the service this is a good handy reference for you second resource here is a architectural diagram quiz so we know about individual services how i can understand that how these services would fit together into a whole architecture so what i did here i have created a free online quiz this is a web based activity so you would just go to a portal no need to log in no need to buy anything it's a free so you could go ahead there and then see some instructions which will be displayed here in this panel and then you would be dragging and dropping services based on reading this information so you would read instruction and will say okay which service will be coming into first what will be the second and once you are done you would submit it and it will tell you whether you did it right or not and it will also give you the detail about the actual reference architectures where you can get more details on that so it will help you to understand not only the service but how it actually fits in the overall enterprise architecture so check this activity also another resource you can find on udemy are the free and paid trainings so i am trying to cover lots of aws services and trying to make your certification journey easy but i always consider the certifications are by product of learning your focus should be on learning things and not just passing certification yes certification gives you a edge it gives you a advantage over others who are not certified but it is of no value if you do not know the technology at all so in this training i am focusing on certification but i am not just saying that this is a important thing for a question i am also focusing on important aspect of those services and architecture so you would probably get a lot of information once you go through this training I prepare these training slides on my free time. It has been enrolled by thousands of learners so far. I have 4.8 plus rating for these this training so far, and I am trying to create both type of content, free and paid training also. All the core services, my plan is to make them free so that everyone can learn about core services. And when you want to pursue and learn about specific track like security or architecting or system operations or development, maybe those will be a specific track training which you would be getting there also on digit on the digital format in Udemy. So I am preparing these training and making them available as they get ready. next program is something which is very near and dear to my heart that is called become a solution architect some of our solution architect have worked together they are all aws employee working with enterprise customers helping lots of customers on day to day basis we saw that it was a large huge gap between people we who we interview for different roles in aws sometimes they may not have good technical knowledge or sometimes they lack some behavioral skills required to become a solution architect so we wanted to bridge that gap and that's why we started this program called become a solution architect a free program we run it online we deliver technical sessions and behavioral sessions every saturday on twitch and then we record and post it on to youtube and we run different tracks on that so so far we have run a serverless track we have run a networking track and we plan to run more tracks on analytics machine learning and maybe databases so that people would not just learn a specific technology but they would also understand a specialist track and then can deepen their skill if they want or learn want to learn more about that specific track so check this program it is voluntary run by some of my awesome colleagues at aws and me and we help lot of people so far we were able to help lot of people so far and interview preparation tips how to answer question into star format which is very unique way of amazonian interviews so we talk about lots of stuff there so check this program 
we run these batches every quarter so probably depending on when you where you are watching this training you, there may be a batch available or maybe soon to be launched so get in touch and we would be happy to help you in getting enrolled in this program this link is available here so you could click on that and get more detail about the besa program page last resource i have here is the book which i am working on with some of my colleagues in aws which is called cloud computing concept and tech analogies what we tried here we tried to create a novel a fiction a book like a story but in that story you are dealing with characters or characters are dealing with situation like a group of new hires who want to migrate their infrastructure to cloud they joined a company company's traditional company who is running everything on prem people are skeptical about cloud then how that group of people go through understanding cloud exploring different options available help migrate their workload to cloud and then benefit from those things which cloud offers so that is the journey you would follow here with different characters within the book and i am pretty sure once you go through this book you would be able to relate some of the characters we have used in the book in your real life in your office your colleague they may sound familiar to what we have used into this book so we are trying to relate your knowledge from classical it on premises to new cloud concept and this is scheduled to be released in may 2023 i'm not sure when you are watching this training so probably it would be released or maybe about to release or already been released till you watch this so this is all additional resources to help you learn further i hope you enjoyed and i am all ears for feedback anything good and bad any criticism anything which i can do to improve the learning any additional feedback you have feel free to reach out anything which can help the make these trainings better i am all ears for it and i want to get connected with like minded people this is my linkedin i may not respond to every message that very moment but i take additional time or i i i make sure that i respond to as many messages as i can so just get in touch if your feedback or even if you do not have a feedback and just want to get connected why not let's get connected so all the best enjoy the learning and keep up the good work and keep on learning new stuff thank you